all of my cream, uh, my cream. <laughs> Get it out, Samantha, your cream what? Say it. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I'm so excited to do, even though we're gonna be talking about some of the worst makeup that I've tried so far in the year 2021. We are about halfway through this year. Can you believe it? And I saw my friend Andrea do this video and I thought, that's a fun idea. Let me tell you about some of the worst makeup that I myself have tried this year. So I will link her a video down below if you haven't checked it out yet. But if you wanna hear about the five worst products I've tried so far this year, let's go ahead and get started. First up, I'm gonna start with one of the most recent products that I, I have in this video. I will say, I do always keep a running list of products that I talk about, not absolutely everything, but all of the palettes that I've tried, all of my top favorite makeup items, my least favorite makeup items, because that way at the end of the year when I do the wrap-up videos, I have learned throughout the year that keeping a running tally of everything makes that end of the year a whole lot easier. So I, when I went back to look at my list, I definitely had way more favorites than I do fails. And I didn't choose all my fails. You know, I had skincare on there and, and hair care in there. I wanted to keep it to just makeup products. And I thought I would narrow it down to just five to kind of keep it short and sweet. I, I like to think of myself as a more positive person, but you know, when it comes to makeup and my job as a reviewer, I have to keep it straight. I have to let you know when the products are just no good. So I narrowed it down to five. So this one here is my newest one. This is not good. I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, this is uh, from the brand Florence by Mills, like a light skin tint. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving a little bit away here from an upcoming video that I will have going up next week, which is ranking all of uh, my skin tints. And um, I don't know, you could maybe just guess where this one is gonna come in at. I purchased quite a few skin tints recently. I do have another video up with four drugstore ones and kind of giving my first impressions on them before I did uh, my actual skin tint ranking, but that's gonna be coming soon. If you missed my last ranking video, it's all ranking all of my cream complexion products. Uh, highlighters and blushes and bronzers and then I did a little Sephora shop with me video and I put I bought another liquid bronzer and I have it on today from iconic London and I did do a little bit of filming on this look It's on my Instagram reels using some of the new products that I did pick up from Sephora So I'm March beauty word over there. But anyways going back to the Florence by Mills skin tint Yeah, no, I just this this was not good. This was clearly, you know My least favorite out of the skin tints that I tried there was a lot that I really really enjoyed and you know, trying to rank them was pretty hard for me. But this was one that the moment that I used it, I was like, oh no, 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 oh no, no, no. And then I tried it again. You know, I like to try everything multiple times, try it with different primers, different powders, different ways to apply it. And this was just not good. I first tried to apply this with my fingers and that did not work well at all. I actually switched to a brush in the middle of applying it for the first time. But something about this skin tint, it is so drying. And it's very odd to me because it talks about being super hydrating and I, to me it's the complete opposite. It made my skin look dry, my skin felt dry, applying it was dry, it just not so well. Uh, I'm kind of in a weird transition of what my skin is like. I did have really oily skin. I have just recently moved to Vegas. I've been here for about a month now and I can tell that my whole body is dry. My hair is dry, my hands are dry, my face is dry, like everything is dry, okay? <laughs> Okay, you know, when I talk about foundations, I definitely want to mention my skin type, even though I feel like I'm kind of in a weird, weird point right now. But even when I was first trying this one a few weeks ago, I had just moved here and I did have more oily skin and I was like, why do I look so freaking dry? This is so weird. And just the way that it wears and it sits on top of my skin, it's like it doesn't sink in fully all of the way. So it just kind of looks like you have that layer of makeup on where you want things to look more natural and blended. I don't know, I didn't like it. I didn't think the wear time was very great on it. Uh, I picked up the shade LM60, but I just, I don't really have a lot of good things to say about this one. Next up, you might have known that this one was gonna come in. I did review this one uh, fairly recently in another ranking video. I do a monthly ranking video uh, on all the products that I've been trying, and this one was, I think, in my most recent one, because Maze hasn't gone up yet. This is from Tatcha, and this is their new silk powder. I am, mm, not to be dramatic, I'm not a dramatic person, but I'm devastated, okay? I'm 
devastated that I didn't love this product because I really like Tatcha. I do like a lot of their products. I like their skincare products. I like some of their uh, complexion products. I really do like their liquid silk canvas primer. The, the liquid one uh, that one I think is so it's literally next to me I think that one is so good so when they were coming out with the silk powder I was like bring it home I was pumped about it I was going to buy this one I ended up getting it sent over in PR I did purchase Florence and Mills by myself I did get the scent in PR but I was planning to buy it I was trying to decide between this one and the Dior powder no powder I have a deep obsession with that powder I'm really glad that I bought it and tried it. Uh, but this one from Tatcha, it made my under eyes look terrible. If you caught the ranking video, I said that I thought my under eyes were in a worse shape because I had run out of my regular uh, nighttime eye cream that's a little bit more hydrating versus my AM, which is a little bit more brightening. I was like, I think it's just made such a difference. My under eyes now look so bad. And I realized it was just the Tatcha powder that looks really bad. Now, I know people tell me, don't use it on my under eyes. I still don't like the way that it looks on my face. It's too cakey for me. It's too heavy. I like really lightweight powders. You know, some of my favorites are Charlotte Tilbury. That is one of the finest powders out there. Even the dupe at number seven, like that one is really fine too. Um, the Dior is a great one. Even when it comes to my, uh, my loose setting powders, I like ones that are more lightweight. Uh, like the Lawless Beauty has a really good setting powder. This one is just too heavy. Once again, like I kind of said with the Florence, it just looks like I have a lot of powder on. It feels like I have powder on. And especially in more delicate areas, like if you have fine lines or wrinkles, like my 34 year old self does, thank you so much. It's going to show all of that and it's going to show it quickly and just like exaggerate them. And that's not what I'm going for in my life right now. I'm trying to have a glow up, so, you know, that's what we need to be happening. So, unfortunately, you know, this is pretty expensive powder, too, from Tatcha, and it just did not work out for me. The next products I have already decluttered out of my collection, so let me just pop over. Oh, yes, people, people are telling me they like when I show you my outfits, so, um, okay. Well, I'll just have this little crop shirt on today, kind of like a hybrid sports bra, and then some leggings. Yep. Okay. Good, glad we got that OOTD section out of the way for this video. Fashion icon. So next up, you probably knew this one was gonna be in here too. The Benefit Their Real Magnetic Mascara. The magnetic one. I really like the Benefit Their Real Mascara. I still have it in my mascara collection. I have a little mini of it. I think it's a great mascara. The magnetic mascara, I had no chance. I had zero chance with that one. From the first time I tried it, it was just a complete disaster. The first time that I tried it, it transferred all over my face, all around my eyes, and you visibly watch it happen in a Will I Buy It that I'm filming. My Will I Buy It's can typically, I mean, sometimes they can take me an hour to film. Um, they can take me a while, you know, I'm scrolling through my phone, you know, even though the videos are only 30 minutes, a lot of that is me cutting out footage or me with the camera off but still sitting here going through my phone finding the photos making sure i'm not missing anything finding the prices i'm here for a long time filming and i'm typically filming under a light or near a window with the sunlight it does get warm in here but you watch that mascara slowly go all over my face and even though i sit close to my camera i don't have like a screen or anything to watch me so sometimes i need to get one but with my new setup, it's just, I don't know what I'm doing in here yet, but I, I don't have a larger screen to be watching me to make sure like I'm in frame or like my lipstick hasn't gone on my teeth. You know, every once in a while, I think you can see me in my videos, like visibly run my tongue over my teeth. I try to do it when I'm not on camera, but sometimes I'm like, ha, ah, is that lipstick? <laughs> and so I did not know that the mascara was going everywhere. I got done filming. Uh, and I started to take my photos, my my photos for my thumbnail, and I'm and I'm like, gosh, I feel like something looks like just a little bit off for me. And I finished taking the because again, I can't see closely, so I get done taking the photos. I go into my other room. I was still in my old house at this time, and go into the other room to start to import. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, what? The whole of what happened here? What happened? Who did this to me? I, it was comical and I had that moment of like, okay, I went through the video footage and was like, okay, this is where it really starts to get bad. I can just refilm those parts. And I was like, why? I'm going to keep it in. And I feel like that's a great review. Like that's a great review of a product of it transferred so quickly on me. 
so I kept it in it's real life we all deal with smudge mascara whatever it is what it is but yeah no that one was real bad and I tried it a few more times and I tried it just on my top sometimes with my bottom lashes you know those can kind of smudge a little bit faster so I tried it just on my top lash it doesn't matter that mascara to me was just no good it also didn't make my lashes that like extreme like I thought they were going to this is a mascara that I feel like a lot of people really do enjoy so I have really high hopes for it and to me it just wasn't anything outside of like a basic mascara that made my lashes look fine it also transferred a lot on me and keep in mind when I was trying it I was very very oily so you know that could have an issue too uh but no that mascara no go. And then I have two lip products to finish out with uh one is from NARS and this is their soft matte lip color and i kind of teetered back and forth a little bit about putting it in here but i i have decluttered them out of my collection and i just i just wasn't a fan out of the other products that i've talked about i feel like those have definitely been worse this is like just kind of made the cut in this video but i still didn't love it and i still it wasn't even lip products like they didn't even make the move with me like they were decluttered out of my collection like why would i even you know take up valuable space. I, I did not bring a lot of things out here to Vegas with me, okay? So I had very little space to bring things. And, uh, and the NARS lipsticks did not make the cut. To me, they're just, you know, the other products that I'm talking about, I just feel like are not good products in general. I feel like with the NARS, this one is a little bit more personal preference and that's why I kind of went back and forth on it. But it's one of those lip colors that are a little bit more on the drying side. Uh, not a lip color that is going to stick around for a long time, which, you know, it is what it is. I also like gloss, and th those don't stick around for a long time either, but it's a matte lip color, and I just feel like with mattes, I want them to stay for a while. It's a little bit more of a thicker formula, almost like a little bit more moussey, kind of like the ColourPop. I think it's their, oh shoot, what is it called? Like their Blur? <laughs> ColourPop just has so many products in general but also lip products they're velvet blurs is that what they're called i i don't quote me on that i could be saying that wrong but one of color pops lip colors that i also really don't like that formula either that's what the nars reminds me of so this one to me i feel like it's just a little bit more personal preference but i didn't find it to be comfortable or long wearing and kind of the color that it gives is kind of just not vivacious enough for my liking so the nars soft matte lip colors those were a no-go. And then to finish it out, I do have a drugstore one. Is this my only drugstore one on here? Okay, all right. But from e.l.f., this is their Ride or Die Lip Balms. Now, I do believe that these came out in 2020, but I don't think I tried them until 2021. I did not try them when they first came out, and then they came out, I, I think I'm saying this correctly, with more shades. I got those sent to me in PR. I did also get the Benefit Mascara sent to me in PR. Uh, but when Elf sent them, I was like, oh, I'll try them out. And it's one of those lip colors. I believe I tried it out for the first time in a video. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Like, it's a lip balm. Has a, just a little bit of color to it. Not too much, but it felt good. I was like, awesome. After, like, an probably like an hour or so of wearing them it starts to get that to be really goopy where it's like on the inner part of your lips you get those like just like and then that and i just mm, i'm not a fan of that i'm not a fan of that at all i tried using it with less product because i was like well maybe it's me you know maybe i got a little too happy with my lip balm and just like on my lips uh so i tried to use a less amount of product but still it just it's just like it's too thick or something and it kind of goops out that way especially in those like little inner corners of your lips not good so i'm not a fan of those and i felt like they were drying that was another thing too with a lip balm you know i'd like to be like hydrated or moisturized or something and with that one i was like why do my lips still feel so dry so i know that they're more affordable and they're from elf which is great but personally i didn't like them i don't know has anyone tried the elf rider dye lip balms because i don't think i've even mentioned them i think i tried them towards the beginning of the year with like you know, my life was imploding and I just was trying to keep it all together. And I don't think I've actually reviewed them yet on my channel. So I think this is the first time I'm mentioning them in a review capacity. So I would love to hear from you if you've tried them and what you think of them. But other than that, that is it for today's video. The five worst makeup products that I have tried so far in 2021. I'd love to know what are some products that you've tried this year that you're like, mm -hmm, that's no for me, girl. I would love to know. Leave them in the comments. Again, please make sure to check out Andrea's video. This is where I got the idea from. So, of course, please check her out. I will link her in my description box. And as always, if you enjoyed this one, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go. And I'll see you in my next video.
Bye.